I'm Joni Holm. I'm a retired pediatric nurse practitioner. I've worked in the uh, Avera Brookings Clinic for 40 years, and I am a part-time nurse here at the Brookings Health System with cardiac rehab. The main thing I noticed was an extreme dry throat, and it went from just my throat's dry to my throat is parched. It's uh, surprisingly easy to get your answer. And if you don't have sleep apnea, wonderful. If you do, then you've got a solution. You know, you hear a lot about the, the uh, need for the lab, sleep lab, and it is important for certain people. In this situation, if they find that it's positive, then you can skip the sleep lab. So you're in the comfort of your own bed. Um, and I think easier to sleep that way. I had 18 sleep interruptions or sleep events per hour. It's 10 seconds of sleep apnea, of not breathing. So 18 times in an hour, when you should have zero to one an hour. So you're obviously not getting great sleep. It was a um, actually an APAP machine versus a CPAP. And the APAP, uh, my understanding is it reads when you need the breath versus just automatically setting it. And so it, um, it's a little more sophisticated. Super easy transition. I have, a, I have an app that talks about your use and it tells if you, how many times you take the mask off, you know, if you have events, um, if you have a good seal, all of those things. And I've been 99 to 100% from the first night. I slept with it on, I just, just doesn't bother me. I went into it super positive and I would certainly encourage people to do that. Um, you often, often, often hear about the sleep apnea machine living under the bed. And as soon as I heard the diagnosis, I, uh, I just immediately had a very positive uh, mental reaction of, wow, this is gonna be helpful. And I haven't taken it off once in the night. So the machine itself is, is really pretty easy to use, pretty cool. So this is the entire brains of it. You put some um, distilled water in here. The tubing comes off for packing, but you just pop it back on. Um, as you can see, the tubing's super long. So as in bed, you can just flip over and I don't even notice it really. Occasionally, just the position of my arms, I, I have to reposition so that I'm not crimping it or something, but it really isn't a problem. And um, you put the mask on over your head, and I, I, I mentioned that mine is just a nasal mask. And then I just hook the oxygen tubing onto the front of it. So this is the process. And then I can flip over, I just click it on. You don't feel it, and oh, I forgot to mention, it's silent, absolutely 100% silent. It doesn't have any big breathing sounds that's gonna bother your partner or bother you. And then the other thing that's cool is there is an app uh, with the, that goes with the machine and it tells me uh, how I've done during the night. I used the machine for seven hours and 15 minutes. Uh, my mask seal was perfect, 20 out of 20. I had 0.8 events per hour. Uh, and in the, my sleep study, I had 18 events in an hour, so less than one per hour, which is really pretty normal. Everybody has some sleep events. But it, it's very reassuring to know that, that it's working. If I continue to have the low oxygen levels that I had on my night, which, you know, how long has that been happening? We don't know. But it would definitely have um, a, an effect on my cognitive ability if I was running low oxygen all the time. So knowing that my oxygen level stays up is huge. I wanna stay alive for my four kids. And they lost their dad recently. I, I need to be there. I wanna be there. Um, but yeah, I think in the long run, I'm gonna be around for my children because I'm taking care of myself. Are you one of Brookings Health System's grateful patients who would like to give back to us? Learn more about how you can give back at brookingshealth.org slash mythanks.